Good morning, good afternoon, good day. Welcome to our service on this fifth day of September. Um, service of the word. You're more than welcome whether you're joining us online, on the telephone, or here in the building. There's not too many announcements because we're still under the similar restrictions, but with that in mind, you may have heard of the announcements in the government in relation to 50%. Now, I still need to seek further clarification, but I've sought some clarification from the Archdeacon. And it seems that it's with all the present restrictions as they stand at the moment, two meters distancing and so forth. So the uh, upshot of that is essentially, it doesn't really make very much difference. It means that we'll be operating essentially as we are at the moment. And unfortunately for the time being, Mean Glass will not be able to open because of its small size and the distancing and the isolation area required. So just to let you know that I am keeping abreast of things as they develop, but essentially it means there's very little change for us at the moment. Please keep your, in your thoughts and prayers, or prayers especially, the two candidates for confirmation this afternoon, uh, Brooke and Jordan, as the Bishop is joining us this afternoon to confirm them. They were due to be confirmed only about two weeks after the very first lockdown back in March 2020. So they've had a very long wait to get to this point. So your, your prayers for them and for their families would be much appreciated. So we begin with our service today and we open with the opening words and grace. The grace and mercy and peace in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son jesus christ our lord amen we have come together in christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive god's holy word and to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world and that the power of the holy spirit may give ourselves to the service of god O lord open our lips let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. And praise is a very key word today. I'm guessing that you mightn't be quite adverse or with um, Hebrew, uh, you're reading from right to left there, but that is actually the Hebrew for the word hallelujah. And we'll be coming back to that again later in the service, particularly in relation to our psalm. But as we do each Sunday by Sunday, we always put ourselves right with God, recognizing that we're often wandered off in our own way and not gone in the ways of God. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's from John, the book of John. So we pause for reflection and prayer and silence, and then we say this confession together. O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments, and we've often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our, your, our sins, forgive us, we pray, to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we come to the psalm, the response, the beginning and the end. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and satisfy our needs. Alleluia. Praise to the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help from them. When their breath, their last, they return to their earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who, who have the God of Jacob for their help whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and is all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. 
who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind and the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and satisfy our needs. We come to our hymns. Can you please stand for those in the building? We bring you, Lord, our prayer and praise.
Please be seated for our first reading from the Old Testament. Thanks to John. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, beginning at verse 4. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had had impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Apathatha, that means be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying he's done everything well, he makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to the, our sermon, our word of God today, first the college for this Sunday. Almighty God, whose Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us a pure and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, I pray that as we come to your word, we might have ears that are open, eyes that are open, and hearts that are open, and voices that would proclaim your goodness that we receive from you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, the heart of the matter for today's sermon of the words on the Bible are just that. But as mine, and I would imagine your Hebrew is a bit on the rusty side, there it is transliterated into English. Hallelujah. It's actually the first part of our psalm. And I thought we'd begin by reflecting on the psalm because we say the psalm Sunday by Sunday. Yet unfortunately, we rarely reflect on what the psalm is to saying and therefore what we say together. Hallelujah is a combination are put together of two words, and my Hebrew is a little sketchy, but it's halal or hallelu, uh, which is the first part, and that is the masculine version, 
So it's been said to a male, and it means praise. It's the imperative. You must praise, essentially, is what it means. And then the second word, second part, the ja, as you have it there, was actually ya, which is abbreviation of Yahweh, which is the name of the Lord our God. So it essentially means you shall, you must praise God, which is what the psalmist begins with there. Now, when I look at a Bible passage, I usually ask of myself or of the passage and of God these few questions, who, what, where, and when. So who is it we are praising? Well, the psalmist tells us quite plainly, happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose help is in the Lord their God, who's made heaven and earth, the seal, and that's all that's in them, who keeps his promise forever. So this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of the people of Israel, and through Jesus, our God as well. And that's key because we come back to the God of Jacob in our reading from Mark's gospel. So this is the one whom we praise, who we give praise for. He is also the creator God and who keeps his promises and sets his hand to keep that which he has promised. So why do we praise him? Well, the psalmist again says, Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help from them. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. The psalmist remembers and reminds us that if we put our trust in humans and human things, they pass away. But God does not pass away. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. All human things, unfortunately, if you remember from the committal prayer, dust to dust and ashes to ashes. So that is why we praise a steadfast, depending and forever God. Well, what is it we are praising? What is it we're giving praise for? Well, the psalmist recounts the very nature of God and says, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, and the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. And this echoes, of course, our reading from Isaiah. Both Isaiah and the writer of the psalm have come to know the very nature of God, who reaches out and ministers to the least, the last, and the lost. And we see two examples of this with the Syrophoenician woman and with the man who is deaf and dumb. God reaches out to those most in need, and as his people, we're called to reflect his will and ways, and we are to do likewise. That is what we are praising. But where is this praise to be seen and to be had? Well, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Well, the God, with God is praised mostly among those who follow his ways, the righteous, the Lord is praised often in the stranger. We see this in Sarah, Phoenician woman. She was not of the Jewish nation. So she was a stranger, if you will. She was a widow. We don't hear the husband who more than likely would have come if there was a husband. So she's most likely a widow. And he has frustrated the ways of the wicked because he's brought her healing. We see many examples of that. And he reaches out and ministers Oftentimes, Jesus is criticized by the religious leaders of the day because he doesn't stop healing on the Sabbath or he doesn't stop healing when it's inconvenient or in the wrong place. Jesus still reaches out as God to others. And of course, we have Zion there, which of course is Jerusalem. And of course, that is where all Jews would have and still continue to come together for praise. So when is it that we praise? Well, the psalmist says, praise the Lord on my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. The psalmist says we are to praise God. We're praising him today in song, in word, and in prayer, but not just once a week on a Sunday. We're to praise him throughout our whole lives. We're to recognize and give worship. It's not that he needs it. It's more that in praising him, we recognize who and what he is and where he is in our lives and our world. So I thought it was more than time for us to reflect on the psalm. 
We turn now to the next part, our second reading. And I wonder, as we read this or reflect on this, do we see God? What do we expect of God? Do we expect too much of him? Do we expect him to wave as if he had a magic wand? Or do we expect too little to him and not expect him to attend at all? Or do we have no expectation? Are our minds blank to what he might do? I pray that as we reflect on the words that God would speak to us and that we would understand and know fully and truly what, we, what he is and how he works. So we look at this woman here and the gospel writers would have had so much more they could have written about Jesus and of all that happened around him. So they could only include some of what happened. So why is it they've included this bit? Well, it's an illustration an example that even though Jesus is not in, in the Jewish part of the world, as we see there, he's in the far north, the, the top left-hand corner, Syrophoenician land. He's north even of Galilee. So he's outside where the Jews live, outside the Jewish land. He's obviously gone there for a little bit of quiet, peace and quiet. And yet even there, he is sought out and sought out for his healing and help. So he is in the wrong place, if you will. And the widow is the wrong person. Remember, she's not Jewish and she's a woman on her own and a woman and a man would not normally meet in such circumstances. And it's the wrong time, if you will. But even there, Jesus is reached out. And so the Mark is trying to draw our attention that no matter where it might be, if we even feel we're in the wrong place, the wrong time, even there, God is there. And then we have a little discussion which might at first glance seem a little curious as to why they're talking about dogs under the table. And Jesus, you know, she asks help of Jesus and this is Jesus' response. The children must be fed first. It, is, it isn't right to take away their food and feed it to the dogs. And the woman pleaded to him, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that the children drop from the table. And Jesus answered, that's true, you may go now, and a demon has left your daughter. What has been picked up here is that, as we know, that there are derogatory names of people and names that we're not to mention these days. Well, in those days, what Jews called um, non-Jews were dogs, and it wasn't the uh, polite version of that. Whereas actually Jesus uses the more polite form here, he's actually using it like the word of a pet dog and not in a derogatory way. So obviously he said he came first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. So he came to the children of Israel and then those whom to be cared for in addition, and the, he's using the illustration here of a dog. And the woman takes up this example and says, yes, but even the dogs would receive crumbs. So she's definitely open to God, to his word and to his way and to his will. And Jesus recognizes this faith, this praise, if you will, and responds to her request and gives her daughter healing. Next, a little bit later, Jesus has traveled south and he's now in the Decapolis. Uh, that is the region of Deca, as Greek is 10, and Apollos is city, region of 10 cities, which was settled mainly by Greeks beside Galilee by Alexandra's people, the, um, Alexander the Great. So why has Mark included this? Well, again, we have a man here who's physically unable to hear and unable to speak. Yet there's obviously those around him who can speak and hear, but we hear nothing of them and they say nothing of Jesus. So they ask for Jesus's healing and he spits on his hand, puts his hand in his ears and on the tongues. And he says, Epaphraha, which is Aramaic, which is a form of Hebrew, which Jesus spoke. And Jesus says his ears be open and his mouth be open. So it's not that Jesus didn't do healing, he did, but it's also an example of con contrasting of those of us who might not be open to hear, might not be open to speak the praise of God. So therefore that asks of all of us as we look at this passage and these passages, do we see who Jesus is? Do we hear his word and his ways? Are we open to God? Are we close to God? Because as we draw this towards a close, we need to remember the name Jesus is, the, is, the, is from the word Yeshua, 
which is a form of a similar form of the word Joshua, but what the name Jesus means, God saves. So we open to being saved by God, redeemed, restored by God, and do we respond then by saying hallelujah? We must praise our God. Is that our response, our openness and response to who Jesus is? I certainly hope and pray that it is. So let us now respond in the creed. Can I ask those in the building together to stand as a mark of respect? And the part we say together is in yellow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he'll come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can I ask those who are present in the building to be seated again for prayer? Thank you. Heavenly Father, let us remember the words of the prophet Isaiah, to be strong and fearless. We gather our thoughts and prayers with hope and humbly ask on you to help us in our needs. Give wisdom and grace to all those who serve your church. Within the worldwide Anglican communion, we pray today for the church in Sudan. Within our own diocese of Derry and Rafaux, we pray for the parishes of Moville, Greencastle, Donna, Kildarf, and Cloncar. We ask for your blessing upon the the minister who will be joining them shortly there, Reverend Alan McCracken, who will be taking up as a rector of those parishes. Bless Andrew, our bishop, and bless our own rector, Reverend Adam, for all those who hold office in your church. Bless their service. And by the example of their faith, let it be reflected across their communities and increase your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our government governments both here in the Republic of Ireland and in Northern Ireland. We pray for leaders across the world as they strive to bring peace, to bring reconciliation, especially in those countries of this world where violence and war are ever present. We continue to pray for the Holy Land, the lands of the Middle East, for Afghanistan. We pray also for those countries where they have been afflicted by disasters, flooding, drought, earthquakes. And for those countries where the pandemic is still rife, where vaccinations have not gone perhaps as smoothly as desired. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we worship you as one who has given us life. We ask that you will help us to live it to the full, that we may be friends and neighbors that we really want to be. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Isaiah's reading, in the reading from Isaiah today, it foretells the time when Jesus came to open the eyes of the blind, to unstop deaf ears, to make the lame walk again. We pray especially for those who are afflicted by blindness, deafness, for those who may have been struck dumb by such disease as strokes. We ask that you bless those who provide the specialist care for those so afflicted, for those who help provide dogs for the blind, for those who provide technology and assistance to help those communicate. And Lord, in a moment of quiet, we bring to you those known to us who suffer and are in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord, remember those who have passed away. We pray for those who mourn. Of in this parish, we pray especially for Jim and Isabel. For the McCain and the McKnight family circles and the extended family of Isabel McCain, whose death happened last week. We ask, Lord, that they may realize that, that they may realize on the salvation through Jesus Christ. That they may know of the life eternal. And that that will bring solace and comfort to them at this time of sorrow and need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you that your wisdom not only enlightens us, but transforms us, guides us, in our daily walk through life of you. Help us to always accompany our words of fear with deeds of action. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we draw all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For those here in the building, can you please stand and we come to our final hymn today. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. say together. Be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the almighty and merciful God, the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.